Pat Love from Love Healing Hearts, back with a beautiful experience on one hand and a horrific one on the other. All righty now. We're dealing with a YouTube viewer and subscriber whose code name is Mossy1954. And this is what they wrote to me and gave me permission to share on a video. I know what you mean, dear sister, about that love from God. It is impossible to explain to others. I was taken to heaven some years ago, and it was only for five minutes. What I saw, though, was water that was really alive. I was able to feel a love that nothing of this world can be anything like. No joy exists here on earth to compare to what I felt. It was a complete love, perfect and righteous. And then, sometime later, I said to the Lord, please, also, Lord, show me hell. I need to see both sides. <clears throat> I don't think I would have done that, but anyway... <clears throat> I had and still do work inside men's max security jails with chaplains, and I just felt it important to know the experience, something I can tell the men inside to help them find Christ Jesus. One night I had a dream. I saw a demon with ears of a large dog. And the evil it had in its eyes, I thought would obliterate me. I won't say too much about that. But what I want to tell you and others is this. The fear I felt. No human on the earth can feel. You have to see hell. Horrified would not even touch that feeling. It was devastating to my soul. And a person could not even feel one-tenth of this fear alive. I was knowing on waking that if I had been there any longer, I would wake with a heart attack. Surely, it was unequivocally impossible to express the agony one feels. I beg people. I beg people to repent and follow Christ Jesus now. Please, what I saw and felt is for all eternity now. Do not go there. Do not go there. You don't want to go there. Please, seek Christ now. Well, I did a little emphasis on that because some of y'all need to be begged into the kingdom. And it's so sad that it's like that. I did too. I'm just glad I, I listened. But some of you guys aren't listening. Some of you guys are playing tiddlywinks and Russian roulette with your life and your souls. I would rather believe in something that's not true than to not believe and find out how true it really is. Do you hear me? When I first got saved, I told God I wasn't sure I believed in him. I told him I wasn't even sure there really was a Jesus, or was it just a fairy tale that was systematically created to control the masses? Oh, I had all my little philosophical ideas. And I even told God I did not believe in heaven or hell. But guess what? Dum Diddy Dum Dum had just a little bit of a pea brain left to make the right decision and say, but just in case, I'm going to give you a try. And I'm going to commit myself. And we'll see how this goes. I can't promise I'm going to do that great, but we'll see how it goes. I will give it all I have. And I did. And I'm telling you, 
I had my share of hell on this earth before I got saved because I lived daily with turmoil constantly brewing in my core. I lived with the saddest feelings and anger, resentments, fears, all kind of crazy fears and intimidation. And I was bound up, tied up in knots. I was, I was a mess. And only God, three days after I gave my heart to the Lord, you guys, I felt something I thought only belonged in fairy tale books. I felt peace. And I thought peace was a phony word. Honestly, I did. I mean, I'm not being sarcastic. I really did not believe there was anything called peace. I thought it was just something that people made up like fairy tales. Happily ever after. Yeah, right. But I woke up on the third day. Yeah, that sounds kind of funny. And I was full of peace. For the first time in my life, I felt alive. I was happy to be here. And I knew I had a purpose. Wasn't sure what it was, but I felt a sense of purpose I never felt ever before. And the emptiness that was my shadow, that was always with me, like my name, was gone. I was so full. I was so euphoric. I couldn't believe I could feel that good. I'm telling you, that was the beginning of the miracles. Well, the first miracle was I was delivered from a cigarette habit, 15-year two-pack a day. That was miraculous because I felt something jump off my chest when I rebuked it in the name of Jesus. But back to why it's advantageous to give your heart to the Lord. There are benefits. There are things that happen on the inner man that some of us can't even put in words. But it's almost like telling somebody you never will experience it until you, you dive in. You can't experience what it feels like to be in a swimming pool if you never get in one. If all you do is take showers all your life. And you don't know what it feels like to get into a swimming pool? Now, some of you who don't know how to swim, who have a fear of water, I can't describe to you the feeling that comes on me when I float on the surface of the water. I can't describe how that feels and, and how I have to do my, how I have to relax in order to do. I can't even describe that to you. So imagine us trying to describe God's love to you trying to describe his peace to you, his presence. There is no way we can describe God's presence. You've got to experience that for yourself. Okay. I'm not going to twist your arm. His experience said it all. I always have to add my two cents. I just can't help it. I just hope that you heard with your heart. I hope you get it. And I hope you get Jesus in your heart. Don't walk away and say, oh, yeah, that was pretty cool. No, 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 no. Don't, don't watch this like it's a Hollywood movie that you paid money to sit up and eat popcorn and then go home and see what else is on TV. Take this video to heart. Please. In the name of Jesus, I command you to get saved. Give your heart to the Lord today. Now is the day of salvation. God bless you.